uh, we will try, by God's grace, to touch a very sensitive aspect of our life. And that is in connection with happiness. Uh, I don't know if I should ask you if you want to be happy or not. <laughs> Who does not want to be happy? <laughs> yeah. Let's read. And this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment, being filled with the fruits of righteousness. That's huge, this affirmation of the Word of God. Filled is not having something, more or less. Filled. Thank you. Uh, filled means yeah, full, full with the fruits of righteousness, the fruits of the spirit, uh, and it's making clear that those fruits are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God. We cannot produce those fruits. And if not having those fruits, we cannot be happy. The Lord designed us in His likeness and He is happy. If we don't have His power, His Spirit, if we don't have His life, we cannot be happy. And somehow people realize during the centuries and the millennia, uh, it's difficult to be happy. And then they reach the conclusion that's even sin to be happy. I don't know in, uh, in your country, so there are some churches around the globe, in, at least Romania is on the list, in which the saints are painted on the walls of the church, long-faced saints. <laughs> Fearful! If you bring a kid, and you're supposed to explain to him, look, these are the saints that are loving God. <laughs> Poor kid, he will, he will quickly find out where is the exit of the church. And he will run away to enjoy life in the sunshine with his other happy kids. I will start with a thing that I, for sure that you already heard, but it makes sense to remind, uh, to, to remember. Now, is we want to consider these things here. Uh, there was a parent, a father, with his child on a Sabbath day in the park. And uh, he was admiring nature together with his father and so on. And uh, he was commenting with himself, seeing a butterfly uh, flying happily from a flower to another flower. And he was thinking, look, this guy, yeah, the butterfly, has some kind of other religion than ours. Look how happy he is. And then they saw, I don't know what squirrel, uh, yeah, from a uh, branch of a tree to another tree and enjoying, like, oh, it should have, have another religion than uh, my family because look how happy he is. And so on and so on. And finally, on the, on the fence was uh, how do you call it? There was Thai. Uh, uh, how do you call it? Donkey? A donkey. A donkey. Poor donkey was hot outside and he was uh, uh, yeah, linked with the fence and he had to wait there in the sunshine and with a long face. Yes! He has my religion. <laughs> my father's religion, in other words. Question. I don't ask, I don't wait for an answer, but I'm having the question for you and for my heart. How happy is your religion? Because out of that, within other fruits, will be less happy your own marriage. Yeah? And then the question is, should we be happy? Is it good or is it bad? Is it within the plans of God? Well, it's a kind of weird uh, yeah, invention later on to distract people from the track of salvation. 
How is with the happiness? Is it good to be happy? Should we be happy? Guys, sure. Can you share your thought? Huh? Should we or it's or good? Yeah. Jesus loves you and he wants you to be happy. And that's another even stronger statement. The cross of Calvary is an eternal pledge to every one of us that God wants us to be happy, not only in the future life. Let's make it clear. So we'll be happy one day, but by now. Oh, that Satan, that temptation, that you have to keep in control. It says, I'm keeping under my body, yeah? In subjection, so that I will not look. Yeah, keeping under is not so happy thing of life, or is it? Yeah. And then in the future life, I'll be happy. No. The Lord put the cross and let his son die on that in order to make sure that we agree, we understand, we acknowledge that we are to be happy. And this is the thing. Then the next question is, but why so much unhappiness? We were thinking yesterday, not only in this uh, uh, world, so many divorces, so many unhappy families, children running from a parent to another parent, pleading with a don't divorce, please don't, please don't do that. I love my dad. Yes, okay. But look, mom has other, yeah, or, okay, uh, daddy has some other plans, and, uh, okay, you cannot understand by now. What should he understand, the little child? We cannot imagine how many tears, how many broken hearts, daily, in this world of ours. Why so much unhappiness? And why within our church? Why people uh, splitting, unhappy, yeah, things happening in our midst? Jesus wants you to be happy. So, said it anew. That's the daughters of God, 170. Jesus wants you to be happy, but you cannot be happy in having your own way and following the impulse of your own heart. That's the point. It's not because uh, the environment is bad. The other people in the family or in the church or whatever are not so good. It's because inside me, I have a concept of how happiness should be and I want that. And I'm insisting on that. And this is making sure that I'm not happy. That's crazy. I want to be happy and just by that insistence, I make sure that I not reach happiness. And that's interesting for you as young people and for us as parents to consider. Yeah? If we are insisting to have our own, our own way, uh, I'm the head of the house, the Lord put this responsibility on me, this is the way. So, okay, just come with them. Yeah, that's the thing. There are some times in which you have to more or less do that. But if you do that at every single tiny detail of life, you make sure there's no happiness at all. And I'll come back to this thing later on. If somebody wants to really destroy his happiness, which the Lord does not want at all, he wants us to be happy, totally, completely, fully, as in heaven, here on earth was saying the prayer, yeah? As in heaven, to be here on earth. There's the happiness of God. Not in the future life only. Now, then, how can we destroy the happiness? It says, whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. And whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. It's totally against our logic. For instance, mom is calling from the kitchen. Hey guys, I need from the basement a bag of potatoes. What does it mean? 
that you want to save your life. Yeah. Okay, I make sure that I'm very uh, deeply uh, immersed in my studies in geography because tomorrow I'll have yes. an exam on that. Yes. And I didn't hear. Okay, maybe my brother heard the thing and he'll go, let him serve. I'm not the one I want to be happy. And I'm, I'm saving my life for myself. In this way, and in uh, this line of thinking, yeah, I'm trying to live for me, to enjoy myself according with my own pleasure and my own way, I'm making sure that I'm losing all the taste of life. Then I'll never uh, experience true happiness. And what's strongly shocking us, if totally contrary, yeah? You jump from your chair and says, I'll be the one, and I'll reach the bag of potatoes before my brother. Yes! And you run, okay, you may jump, I don't know how you do, and grab the potatoes, and your brother may think, poor him, yeah, let him do it. Thinking here that he is happy and you are the little one not so clever to skip around. Something is to be done. Oh, not for me. No, look, I'm busy. I have this, I have that. I cannot. Uh, somebody else should, uh, yeah, try. By then, the Lord Jesus explained to us that we are destroying our happiness, our life. We lose the taste. And we try to have it back, and then we become more selfish. Yeah, and I, I want, I want the happiness. I don't have it. And maybe I'm doing too much for the others. Then I have to be careful on that. And then the call is giving the chance for you. It's not the paper. I like the opportunity. It's the yeah, the call. Can you be please come to help me? I have this issue here. And you want to be happy and just, oh, I'm sorry, but I can't. Because some reasons, and the long explanations. Did you meet some people like that? Do you have some colleagues? More or less like this, huh? Or Canadians are very altruistic. How is that? The minority, the minority, is uh, accepting the Lord as the wise saying he who is losing his life okay I have something to do but because somebody called me to help and I'll leave my things to help that one and yeah I remember I have a friend in our country years ago he was carrying copy copier machines I don't, copy machines yes. uh, yeah from Germany second hand stuff to Romania to sell them to make a kind of business and uh, yeah he was on the highway in Germany uh, driving an old uh, car with the, the car packed with this kind of machines and uh, yeah he was uh, yeah tired uh, boring to, to drive uh, 2500 kilometers away and somehow he realized that one car was on the shoulder of the highway. It was night. Then he was thinking, oh, did I see it? Or it's only my imagination because I'm tired. And then little by little the, the image was clarified in his mind. And he realized that that guy, if he does not have a phone or yeah, it's not German, there will be a trouble for him up in the morning, who knows. Then he decided that he'll turn. But on the highway, you know, it's quite difficult to turn back. Then he drive, I don't know how many kilometers, to the, the first bridge. Then went in the other way. I don't know how many kilometers to another bridge. And then turned back. And then, yes, there was a, there was a car on the, on the shoulder of the thing. And it happened to be a Romanian as himself, yeah. Uh, okay, they tried to find out what's about, then uh, he helped the guy, then the two cars started to get happily.
the man said, look, if you wouldn't come, uh, who knows when I should get out from here. And so maybe police would pass by or I don't know, because he had no phone. I, I didn't think it, we would have had in the, those times the uh, cellular telephony. Okay. And they were driving through Austria and then to Hungary and then they were at the Romanian border, the two cars. Every, both of them tired, yeah? But at least our friend, my friend, was happy that he tried something, like a, a drop of something. Yeah, who cares? 20 minutes, I don't know, half an hour or more. Uh, arriving, yeah, half an hour later. When they got into the border, he was supposed to pay the taxes for importation, those machines. There was the rule in that time. And there was quite a bit of, yeah, yeah hundreds of kilos of machines in his car and he had to do the formalities then the other one got with him he was thinking okay he has his match and this is his problem his car is working i'm not caring anymore because he's romanian and he can call whomever he wants it's not my business but that surprise was this one that man shook the hand with the yeah officer of the the border like good friends and then took our our friend on his shoulder and said please this is my best last friend that i got he rescued me from be careful with him and then he left the other one asked for the papers and give a what do you call a exemption of taxes like some hundreds of deutschmark gift like that Okay, happiness is because you help somebody, but because God wants us to understand the thing. He may pay some extra, but just make sure that you got the thing. If you give me a little tiny gap, yeah? because in the morning, this friend read into his Bible, and like the morning worship, he who uh, helps a needy, is lending to God. I don't know exactly the translation. Yeah, more or less, this is the word. Lending to God. How is the Lord supposed to pay back the debt for you? Huh. Okay, good question. Please ask God. Don't ask me. I don't know how God is paying back. So is the thing. And I believe that each one of you have your own experiences. Guys, uh, okay, you, you are not the little ones because they, they, they're gone. The, the young people here. If you dream to a good, happy marriage, it's good because God promised and God uh, said that He put the cross to make sure as a pledge, eternal pledge, that we have to be happy. That's good to resolution of your life. We have to be happy. But in order to have that, by now, as you already said, I, I noticed in the morning and yesterday, one of you said the same. Then be careful how you put all your heart in the benefit of the others now. If you get the point, tomorrow you will be better. You have another sensitivity. How can I help? Whom can I help? Which is the opportunity? How should I do? What should I do? And apparently, you are losing. Maybe you are losing. This is Satan whispering to your heart no you're losing you're, you're, you're uh, silly yeah i don't know if this is the word everybody's clever at keeping the things around and you have to do the job for everybody that's man come on are you the last one it depends on which lists apparently jesus was the last one he said i'm the master am i i'm the lord you said I'm the Lord. Okay, I came here with the basin of water and with the towel to serve. To serve. Yes. Who is the first in my list should be like me. If you are like me, you'll be happy to serve. And that's happiness. And later on in life, as a married person, you'll, you'll remember, you'll experience that's happiness. Why are we on unhappy? Because we are ex extremely extremely selfish me too and i'm sorry
to publicly confess. That's it. I'm yeah, praying to the Lord to help me on that. It's not normal, it's not natural to be altruistic, to give instead of receiving. But if you do it, it says that happiness, that's Mount of Blessing, that the statement says, the happiness it will skip into your life somehow. If you strive to reach happiness, you'll never reach it. That's it. If you forget about happiness and you seek things to do for others, happiness is the bonus. And the more you do for others, the happier you are. We thank the Lord for that. That's, uh, I don't know if we say condemned or prone to happiness or designed for happiness or condemned in my little yeah, vocabulary in English, sounds interesting, yeah, condemned to happiness. Seek not your own pleasure, but that of those around you, and in so doing, you cannot but be happy. Can we get this with us? Don't sing your, seek your pleasure. That's the rule. And it's exactly against everything that we get in our schools and in the movies and in the media that we are in contact with. Yeah. And in so doing, you cannot be, that means it's only one option for you. As Brother uh, was mentioning in the beginning, so are you happy? <laughs> That's the only one answer. <laughs> you can be not happy. Come to Jesus with all your needs and wants, and in simple confidence crave His blessings. Trust in God and seek to move more to, to move, yeah, to do from principle, strengthened and ennobled by high resolves and the determination of purpose found only in God. High resolves. I have decided that I'll take only two seconds if somebody uh, asks me something. Until I'll say, uh, yes, let's do it. And then next thing will be to find out if it's possible or not. But if you start, first start to think, oh, but let me see if it's possible or not, maybe in 20 minutes you discover it's not possible. So the idea is to do our best. And that's fantastic how the Lord is paying back, even in this life, with the pouring, yeah, the floods of happiness on us. It's fantastic. And I'm thanking the Lord for that. Uh, I, I had my yeah, little experiences on, on that because the Lord wants me to, to be encouraged doing the same. And I want you to be careful in your own life and to experience this ahead. And to think back whenever you did that this is proven. Move from principle, which is the principle. It says, seek the benefit of the others before and then after your own benefit. That's the principle. Okay, simple like that. And in, instead of losing, you are tremendously gaining. And later on in the, in the married life, marriage life, I think it's the, the best uh, uh, yeah, environment to experience every day, every minute, this thing. And uh, the taste of making somebody happy it's far better than being being made happy by somebody. Yeah? Because if you are made happy by somebody, that's going to fade away in a few hours, I don't know, hours, days, it depends. But if you make somebody happy, that joy you have, it's eternal. The other one will forget. Okay, life is going on. But you'll be happy ahead. And that's good. It's like a, yeah, a smile of God. It says, high results and determination of purpose. I will add that to share with you, the time was good. I don't know how many times I missed the point. And I, yeah, I miss opportunities to serve and to be happy. I remember once I, I got home 
from some long trip. It was in the morning arriving home. And uh, uh, yeah, I was decided to just go in bed and sleep a half a day, yeah, daytime, uh, because night, the night was gone. And then to yeah, refresh a little bit. Tell my wife, uh, yeah, meeting me at the, at the door of the, the house. She said, look, brother such and such called, but I want you to not to go. <laughs> so before telling me what was the, about the, the phone call, she said, but I want you not to go. Then I knew that something is not so yeah, comfortable at that time. That the idea was a few, of a funeral. So one, one of my colleagues called, he needed help in the funeral. Uh, and uh, yeah, he thought on my health. And the funeral was in another side of the country. Then we were supposed to leave within one hour and a half. Then I was thinking, she was looking into my eyes and she knew me. Yeah, that's the problem in marriage or the happiness, I don't know. Because she knows everything that I'm thinking, you know? She says, please don't say that you go because they are not going to do a statue for you after you die. And you have two kids. kids. Then we start negotiating. Okay, good. I'll go to sleep one hour. Then I'll wake up. Then we go to the funeral. You drive, I'll sleep in the car. And I'll see something 20 minutes, I don't know, 40 minutes, who cares? Nobody will die in 40 minutes, come on. Okay, and then I will come back. If I'm okay, I'll drive, if not, you'll drive. <laughs> okay, because you know me, okay. And then we decided like that. I went to sleep, woke up after one hour, then I was uh, in a hurry, yeah, to take my things and to throw them. Then she got into the room and saw me, why, why are you not sleeping? She no, maybe we have to go. Ah, then she was laughing on me. Why? Because the same brother called back and she, he said, oh, the funeral is tomorrow. The funeral is tomorrow. Then go to sleep. Because, by the way, the Lord knows your limits and my limits. But are we ready? The question for you guys and for our dear brethren, mothers, fathers here present. The question is, do we have the principles? Is it set in our mind? Then it's taking less time to decide what we have to do. And if you uh, do it by principle, it's, it's happy. By the way, I went back to sleep. I think I, I, I went to sleep in less than two minutes. I knew. <coughs> Sorry. But with that happy heart that I said yes to God. And then God said, look at you. You're barely standing. Man, come on. I get it. I can't use you like that. Just go to sleep. <laughs> That's how God. He knows. Yeah. But it's so sweet, so nice, the taste, that we are, we are ready by His grace, because He loves us so much, and because He's never tired to help. We are ready to help, at least a little bit, if we can. Yeah. And the Lord will measure the things. If you are trying to do too much, He will take care of that. That's for sure. But the taste is fantastic. And I thank you for the patience that you have. So, about marriage, it should be a continuation of that. It says, marriage is not a joining of two worlds, but an abandoning of two worlds, in order that one new might be formed. And that's scary. Okay, I have my world, and I want to be happy, and I want to marry, and to make somebody happy, then what I'm 
am I supposed to do? And it's a kind of distraction. It's like in a big crowded city, if you want to build something, what do you have to do? Because everything is packed. What do you have to do? To put off stuff and then to build new things. That's the thing, and it's painful. I should be good. But it's good. Because the outcome will be new. Will be, yeah, fantastic. And those people that are, uh, because the one requiring this thing is not marriage, is love. Because you know how good love is. You are ready to say, okay, I'll destroy the old stuff of my uh, yeah, city and I'll beat the new one together with my spouse. Then, on the other hand, this is a, a very interesting thing. Uh, with whom to build such thing? The happiness and prosperity of married life depend upon the unity of the parties. And then it's the explanation. How can the carnal mind harmonize with the mind that is assimilated to the mind of Christ, with the spiritual mind? So, it's a nice smiling person, yeah? And you think, oh, I'll be happy to marry this one. He's not on our faith, he's not our believer, but look how nice character, what a smile, how he's work, uh, walking and uh, yeah, everything is, you are enchanted. Yeah. The problem is, without unity, it's no happiness. Although that seems to be happiness there, it's not. And I got gray hair yeah, in long discussions with married people who dream to their happiness and they reach totally different outcome. That's the thing. How can this thing harmonize? If to the heart is coming the idea to marry an unbeliever, that's not from God who wants you to be happy and who put the cross to make sure that you'll be happy. It's from the other one. Please, don't do that. Just discard. Five seconds, three seconds. When you feel your heart trying to hmm, suggest to you, it's not, it's not at all the, the point. It's not the deliverance. It's not for me. Okay? That's closed issue. Why should we suffer? Years! Yeah. Uh, and uh, other aspects of the thing. It says, one is sowing to the flesh thinking and acting in accordance with the promptings of the own heart. The other one is sowing in the spirit, seeking to repress selfishness, to overcome inclination, to live in obedience of the master. It's total incompatibility. And the two were supposed to be happy. Uh, that's not the time now, maybe later on in the day or tomorrow, or I don't know, in the night, we may share some stories about this issue. Yeah. The positive plea of the Lord who wants you to be happy is don't do that. We have to reach unity and then we have to have a basis. What does it mean? Yeah, a, a, a compatibility of uh, uh, the way we see life, the uh, prospections around yeah, how we enjoy things, uh, how we think on eternity, this, that, yeah. That, that not exactly the same thinking, but compatib compatibility, compatible thing. Yeah. Then, a new, very interesting statement. It says, from a worldly point of view, money is power, but from a Christian standpoint, love is power. Intellectual and spiritual strength are involved in this principle. That means love is clever, is intelligent, intellectual uh, strength is within love. Pure love has a special effic efficacy to do good and can do nothing but good. What? <coughs> Pure love, that's 100% love, yeah? Cannot do anything else but good. And that's important whom you marry, because you're supposed to do only good. 
We were discussing a very interesting point last night, and I was in total agreement. Sometimes our marriage is not similar with our God's relationship with the, the humans. Yeah. If he has to be strong with some people on earth, because the only way he can get them back, are we supposed to be strong with the spouse? We have to make him understand it's our own way. So, love, it's a symbol, but the symbol is never covering the whole reality. The, the relationship between God and his people is a symbol. Yeah? No, the other way around. The marriage is a symbol of the relationship. This marriage of us does not cover all the aspects of God's relationship with His people. But there are many of them so nice. Pure love cannot do but good. It prevents discord and misery and brings the truest happiness. Wealth is often an influence to corrupt and to destroy. Force is strong to hurt. Uh, but truth and God goodness are the properties of pure love. And that's the thing. Uh, I was remembering a statement about marriage saying like this. If you are wrong and you keep silent, you are wise. If you are correct and you keep silent, you are married. <laughs> yeah, strong affirmation. What about if you want to make sure that uh, the voice is uh, clear set? About husbands, it says, if the husband has tyran tyrannical, exacting, critical, so if he is in this way, in his actions toward his wife, he cannot hold her respect or affection, and the marriage relation will become odious to her. She will not love her husband. You may want to make sure that this is the way. Okay, you make sure that she will not love you. That's it. The only, yeah. Because he does not try to make himself lovable. I really love the word. I, I, we don't have one word in Romania to say that. It's great, great. You be built up. You know what is happening in limba Romana de Doyan. Okay. Lovable. Fantastic. How are we supposed to be lovable? Okay, investigate. He does not try to make himself lovable. And now the good part, not doing this, not be, you know, like Hitler commanding his uh, uh, third rate. No. Be like Jesus. Look. Uh, husbands should be careful, attentive, constant, faithful, compassionate compassionate. They should manifest love and sympathy. When the husband has uh, that nobility of character, purity of heart and elevation of mind, very true Christian that the very true Christian must possess, uh, it will be made manifest in the marriage relation. In other words, he cannot be a good brother in the church without being a wonderful uh, husband in, in his family. That's the thing. Therefore, if you want to know about who is Brother Radu, I'll give you the phone of my family. That's five minutes and you'll find out quickly. It's not about what I'm saying today. There, it's the reality. And that's the challenge of God. Who are we? Those ones that we are every day. Not from time to time when we put the tie and we take the bar. Or when we go to office and we meet some high respected people to do business with them and we want to be nice and to be careful. 
and not to be hurt anyhow, doesn't matter what they say, because we want to gain, to win something on that, uh, yeah, uh, business, and they should win as well, and we are, we are to be good business people. What about going home? We are so tired. The, the David, our president, was saying about 23 years ago in my city, in Romania, in a conference, the 6,000 people were present at that time. He said, family is the place in which we are the most loved and in which we behave the worst. I got shocked because I was not married at the time. Ooh. Family is the place in which we are the most loved at the sky and we behave the worst. Why? Because when you come home with this big head, because you have to be careful with your clients and with your colleagues and so on, yeah, not to be ashamed of what you are doing, and home, you just relax. That means you become yourself. How are we? That's the thing. If we uh, start it with, with the, the men, yeah? With the husbands, and then continuing the other half of the thing. Careful, attentive, constant, faithful, compassionate, sympathetic, fantastic. Now about the, about the ladies, just a few words. I learned a word, I didn't know that does exist in the testimonies, but it's interesting. Uh, one of my friends, he was almost to divorce when I met him the first time in my life. Uh, and then we had hours and hours of conversation. He was storing his, his life. And he was regarding his wife like this. Such a beautiful princess. I was, you know, to the sky uh, to love her and so on. We got married. But the problem is that she was like a doll. Uh, yeah. That, that is very beautiful. Or there are some other connotations. You have only to pet the dog and to be nice to the dog. She, she can't do anything because it's a dog. Yeah. You have to do everything around. And that's, that's a dog. Then I was trying to understand what's the problem. Then I, I was shocked to see in the Venice home the positive council. Look, uh, sisters, don't, don't be sad on me, okay? I'm in your hands, I hope to skip a life from this convention, going home, okay? But that's the word of God, positive for us. It says, wives should not be as a doll, but instead take their parts in the, yeah? Look, the, uh, said the unhappy aspect of the thing is in these words. But if the wife is fitful, in character, self-admiring, exacting, accusing, charging her husband with motives and feelings that originated only in her own perverted temper or temperament. If she has not discernment and nice discrimination to recognize his love and appreciate it, but talks of neglect and lack of love because he does not gratify every whim, she will almost inevitably bring about the very state of things she seems to deplore. She will make all these accusations realities. What? A quite strong affirmation. I, okay, I thank the Lord for my wife. And I believe that none of our sisters will fall into this trap. No, he does not love me. That will be. It's the last part of the statement. She will make this accusation become realities. Because he knows how much he loves you. And you tell her, him in a way or in another, no, you don't love me. And years are passing. And poor man, he's becoming tired. And he will... He, he will not be able anymore to continue to love such yeah? beautiful love. So please try 
to having con in, 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 in counting this thing. In, in reverse, the next, uh, uh, take the page, 109, so nice paragraph continuing. We don't have the time now because other paragraphs are saying more or less the same. Putting all your heart, encouraging him in his nice behavior because men are not very, yeah, by nature, very knowledgeable what kind of flowers why should have this fragrance not the other one it's, it's they have to learn I, it, it costed me a lot to, to learn how to buy flowers I, I had a, a nice boss in my photography business and he knew to buy flowers then one day 8th of March it's the day of the women yeah I don't know in can, is it in Canada as well or not so much as here in Europe I don't know and then he asked me did you did you bring flowers to your uh, mother yesterday it was a ninth what how does it come what kind of a guy are you and you and then yeah give me a big wash of my bread and then you know, we were speaking instead of photography there was the business about flowers and I was happy to learn something and then I tried my mother, the first time I brought flowers home, I was quite oh, surprised. Yeah, I don't blame my father anyhow in this context. I hope my son will know how to buy flowers. Yeah? Look, sisters, encourage men to be nice. Don't laugh on them. Look how he tries to be nice. Pour them, the next time they will think twice. Should I be nice or should I be normal? Normal, yeah. Okay, if you want to be happy, then it's about tiny things of life. And we have to be inventive. I don't know, we have to pray. We have to talk, to make fun. But not on each other's sake. Just to be happy together and to find out. So, in, in the last part of our uh, consideration, how this can be done to be encouraging to be uh, cheerful to be uh, uh, building or elevating the others uh, character to make a team of happiness of your home and it's both of the, the two spouses how a strong statement what should we do what works it's applicable to all our religion. They said to Jesus, What must we do to be doing the works of God? What should we do? Works of God. Yeah? And the answer, surprising, the answer of Jesus, This is the work of God to believe in Him that sent what was sent to you. Is believing a work? Yeah. Who can help me? Or it's a thinking, it's an attitude of mind. I got in trouble with this verse because we are supposed to be obedient of God's requirements. We are supposed to be the doers of the law and no transgressor will get heaven. How can we be doers? How can we do the works of God? It says not do something, but what? The word is believe something. And out of that belief, there are coming plenty of fruits and of works in the Christian life. This is the thing. Can I be a nice, sympathical kind of man? for my family, and then for the church, and then for the neighborhood, for the city, and so on. Can I? Jesus promised. Do I believe Him? That's the problem. If I believe, He brings the Holy Spirit. He changes heart. He makes me the man. And then, people will see. I just quoting the, the testimony. It says, one family with the Spirit of God, through Christian family, is worth more than thousands, plural, thousands yeah. of servants. Sister White, not us in our days, Sister White worked for a sermon 
for months. Four months, not every sermon. She was uh, working four months to, to do a sermon. But one of them at least, it's written, she worked four months and she was a lady in connection with God. Speaking with the angels, speaking with Jesus. What does it mean? Thousands of sermons. That's a nice thing. You just come with your wife around and people size heaven. Man, how is possible in century 21st such a thing? And then they will say in their heart, I want that. <coughs> Somehow. They'll come around, they'll start to put questions. They'll... And you cannot fool that. You cannot make a, a how to say, a display of how happy I'm with my, 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 my wife and reality you're not. You cannot. People will size as well. I remember I was young, I was a child. And we, we were having some neighbors, and I was, I was very shocked with the way they were walking on the street. I never saw my father kissing my, ma my mother on the street. But these guys, yeah, like seven houses away, they were kissing themselves on the street. And their son was one year older than myself. Man. Wow, what a marriage, what a thing. Then I connected with my mother. Look how much they are loving each other. Look how they are kissing on the street. I've seen them and saw it. The little child was noticing. Yeah? And then my mother laughed on me and said, Oh, son, if you would know how much beating, yeah, physical, strong aggression the lady is receiving home when they finish to kiss on the street. If you would know, because I know, because no, I know, ladies know everything. <laughs> yeah, and the neighborhood was uh, yeah quite close with each other. Okay, everybody knew. But if you are indeed, you have Christ inside. You are reaching here. Fantastic, believe in Him. Radu, or I don't know your name. Yeah, John, Pedro, whatever. That's our names. Ladies, the same. If I am in you, I'll give you the strength, and you'll be happy. You cannot but be happy. That's the, the promise of God. Then, it says, either make the tree good, and the fruit will be good, and the next part of the thing we don't read anymore. Yeah? Which is the solution? You cannot bring happiness or good fruits on a bad tree. That's the idea of, uh, of the verse. And we have to change the tree. And we are the tree. Question. Can a tree change himself? Yes. It is a form of man. <laughs> That's our problem, brethren, in our church. For old people, for young people, for everybody. I want to be better. That's good what you want, but you'll never achieve. Why? When the Lord Jesus says, make the tree good, what does he mean? Call me and believe me, and I'll make the tree good. This is the thing. Thank you so much for uh, yeah, paying attention on that. Then, trying to finish our consideration, by his grace, only by this power of God. Remember, my dear brother and sister, God is love. And that by His grace you can succeed in making each other happy. As in your marriage pledge you promised each other to do. What does it say? say? You can achieve in making happy each other. But look, Father, we are married already of 20 years. I don't know how many years. Is it still working? She wouldn't believe me. Uh, yeah. Could be serious. I don't know. Where are we? Each one of us. But the promise is, by God's grace, we can reload the plan of God in our life. It's by grace. It's not by might, not by power, not by decision or resolution that we take. It's by Him. And the Lord will help us. And then on the tree of love, as Galatians 5 was saying, yeah, this is another five nice statement. It says, my, my, who, how is it? Mildness. Mildness 
I didn't say it. Mildness, gentleness, forbearance, long suffering, being not easy provoked, bearing all things, hoping all things, enduring all things. These are the fruits growing on the precious tree of love, which is of heavenly growth. <clears throat> this tree, if, if nourished, will prove to be an evergreen. Its branches will not decay, its leaves will not wither. It is immortal, eternal, watered continually by the dews of heaven. Fantastic. Yeah, sorry for taking so long. This is the promise of God. Shall we take us take this with us? Uh, gentle, nice, forbearing, not easily provoked, bearing all things, enduring all things, being like Christ. And then the result, yeah. Pleasing voices, gentle manners, sincere affection that finds expression in all the actions together with industry, neatness, and economy, makes even a hollow the happiest of homes. The Creator regards such a home with approbation. Wow. It's not about how many bathrooms we'll have in our future house. It's about a palace. Industry, neatness, economy, together with those positive traits of character in our approach. And then, real happiness is the last slide. Real happiness is found only in two impossibilities. To be good, only God is good, and to do good. Can you? Can we? Can I? It's two impossibilities, and therefore, happiness is quite absent on our planet. Happiness is only when God brings the two things. I am made, I, I made good and because Christ is in me and I am doing only good. And that's love and that's happiness. I really love this statement. Messages to young people. Yeah, this is happiness. Do good and don't care uh, if it's coming back or not, or when will come back, and how will be like that? And yeah, we, we don't know, but the thing will be will be rewarded by the happiness of God. It says the purest, highest enjoyment comes to those who faithfully fulfill their uh, appointing duties. No honest work is degrading. It is ignoble slot which leads human beings to look down on the simple everyday duties of life. No, I have to, I don't know, uh, clean the kitchen or the bathroom. Oh, uh, the, yeah. I want to do good, important things. That's not, not such, such thing for God like small thing. Everything is good, is big, is huge. And that's the root of happiness. To regarding them, to regard them like that. It says, the refusal to perform these duties causes mental and moral deficiency. Therefore, we uh, uh, conclude only with this statement. The real happiness is to do good because you are made good by the infinite grace of God. Amen. Amen. The closing song is in the same time. Uh, King number 482. I'm happy in the service of the King. May us uh, joyfully Sing the song for the conclusion. And we'll conclude with the prayer of Brother Rock.
Heavenly Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, for the wonderful plans you have for each one of us. We thank you for the Lord Jesus, for his death from the Calvary, and for the infinite love you have for us. Help us, Father, to accept this power of thine in our life. Give us, please, the Holy Spirit in an abundant measure, so that we, we may uh, conquer our own selfishness and all the, the unpleasant traits of character that we still have. And by thy grace and by thy power, we may become new creatures in Christ Jesus, new people, new children of thine, prone to be happy in this world and in the world to come. We pray, pray in a special way for the families here represented. You know exactly, Father, who we are. You know our difficulties. You know our heart and our intentions and our decisions. Help us, Father, every day to look to Jesus and to receive his, his strength to live as he wants us to live through his Holy Spirit, through his power of his life. We cannot do, Father. We try it so many times we fail. Therefore, we want your presence every day with us. And in you, especially, we pray for the young people here present. Be with them, with their aspirations, with their dreams of happiness. Help them, Father, every day to become better and happier children of thine. If, if, and if it's still time for them to marry one day, help them, Father, to find the proper persons, to form happy families, to experience your, your love even here on this earth, and then to continue in your kingdom. Just because we cannot do anything by ourselves, we want to thank the Father for all the promises and for all the help. And uh, we, we want to glorify the name of the Lord every moment of our life in His merits. Amen. Amen. Amen.